Hey everybody, it's Ping. Thanks for tuning in to Whiskey Throttle Media. I'm here with Jay Clark who built a 2024 KTM 350, the VET machine, and uh, made this thing look really cool. It's actually a pretty sweet graphics kit, Jay. I, I gotta give you credit. The design, the decal works guys did a really nice job. Uh, love the look of it. And kind of give me a little bit of your vision when you built this thing. What were you trying to accomplish? Well trying to accomplish is to, so I had a really cool bike to ride when I was done. Huh. <laughs> I see. You, you know the way this works. So I, I wanted a really good bike and I really like the 350 platform from the new KTM, especially this new generation, 23, 24 generation bike. I got a good deal on this bike, uh, found from a guy that for whatever reason wasn't happy and so I'm like, hey, we're happy. So I, I like the bike a lot and you don't need to do anything internally to the engine, uh, but the ECU, Jamie does uh, ECU mods uh, from Twisted, and it just makes it a lot easier to ride, and you have a choice of maps, and one, the ones I like have a lot less engine braking, so freer flowing, and I like that feel, and then the suspension, I'm not a huge fan of the Air Fork. I feel like the Air Fork can be good on that day when you have the suspension technicians out there babysitting you all day, but I don't have that luxury, and so I like spring forks, and I think you're probably in the similar boat, right? I am the exact same boat. <laughs> I'm sitting right next to you in that boat. <laughs> right. We're both paddling that boat. <laughs> right. And, and so is a lot of other people. I mean, it's, it's kind of coming a pretty apparent that Air Forks, are, you know, there's only one company holding tight here, right? And the 350 XCF, which I have that bike too, it's a similar bike. It comes with spring forks now that are really good for 24. So I, I think it's coming. And so we had to do a 6500 kit conversion on this bike. We did that. That works really well from Race Tech. We did that kit and did those mods. And, and, and I'm just loving it. And as you said, Decal Works did an awesome job, kind of a retro looking little theme a little 70s 80s surfer vibe on that logo looking deal and colors reminds me of an, a 70s toyota ad or something yes exactly yeah, it's, yeah it's, that i was thinking of so that we do the toyota thing where we jump you know <laughs> right. million mile club and i call this the goldilocks of bikes it's the perfect size i ride 250fs a lot as you know and i'm still i'm not getting down to 250f weight anytime soon i don't think so i really like the 250fs but the 350 just helps a little bit more at the tracks and it's really fun especially in the winter time those hill tracks and just really able to just you know Go that little bit Lenity, faster. Yeah. yeah. So tell me tell me the parts you got on this thing outside of the race tech suspension oh. and Jamie doing the mapping. Yeah. What else is then, on here? And it works chassis lab has the uh, engine hangers and mounts. Now, uh, I, you know, some of the faster guys are better able to tell those differences, but it makes the bike less rigid. And that's one of the problems with the new generation bike is that it, it is rigid and stiff feeling to a lot of guys. Not as huge of a deal, I think, to, to myself, but it does seem to help. You know, it does seem, combined with the suspension changes, it does seem like it's a lot better. And then I do a lot of our basic mods that we do a lot of times is ICW strengthens up the radiators. So if we have a tip over or fall, we're, we're a lot stronger there. And ODI bars and grips, we've got the champ bin. And then I got the plastic from MX Plastic all white plastic to kind of match our graphics. Pro X chain and sprockets. And this bike would run the stock gearing. We used to change the gearing on these bikes, but now they come with a 52 rear. So we like that gearing. And then uh, scar foot pegs, titanium pegs. I've got the, the recluse torque drive clutch. And of course, an FMF system on there to you know, keep this thing uh, dialed. It's, it's pretty awesome. Oh, we don't like the stock stop stock switches. The, the, the stock start and stop switch is all on the right side here, and the, the switches are kind of weird feeling. So we, Nihilio offers these that are left and right, just kind of like what we're used to, and most, I, I like it, it's a lot better uh, feeling. Uh, having these, uh, it just just feels better to me. I, I'm, I'm in the same boat, I like this. Nihilio Concept started offering this, and I think it's an amazing product <laughs> for a couple of reasons. If you like having them separated, uh, like I just have a hard time finding which one to push. <laughs> right, I, right. I, I don't, it bugs me. <laughs> But also, I'm a middle finger on the clutch and brake guy, so I like the clutch perch moved out, and with that big old fob, I can't do it. Yeah, so this can. allows me, with this little kill switch, I can still fit it in there, slide it over to where I need, so it gives me more room to adjust. It, exactly, so that's what I really like, that setup. And it's plug and play. You don't have to cut any wires or anything. You just plug it into where the stock one goes. It's really simple and easy to run. And, and again, the map switches, uh, it's really easy with the stock. Uh, Jamie's got them tied in there, and it also has quick shift. Quick shift feature, you really only benefit maybe at a Glen Helen, you know, where you're really going to be going up a hill, not wanting to touch the clutch, and just yeah, it works or, pretty or cool. Or hard slick conditions, that it's good in that. I don't, I don't ride in those. No, you're no, right. That's right. I go home. As soon as you see a little poof of dust, you're out of there. Boom. Yeah. No, no way. Well, uh, I want to also mention Moto Seat. They put this cover on for you here to match the the kit. That was great. Of course, we got the MX34 front that works really well in a wide range of terrain, and got the Dunlop MX14 rear. Look, got a little bit harder pack out here at Quia than we'd like, but it, that tire just rips, and especially up the hills is just awesome. And with, we got a little bit of the works connection bits too. We got the whole pro launch hole shot device, which a lot of guys use for racing. I'm not a huge racer, but I have it there just in case. Um, well, we had our guy Bruce Murata come and ride this thing, and uh, we're going to bring him in and get his thoughts. <laughs> Bruce 
Chris Murata, uh, Whiskey Throttle Media member here and test rider. Uh, this was your assignment today. Uh, you looked good on it. It was like this thing sounded nasty. Kind of sounded like a 450 to me listening when you went by. What did it feel like? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> the 350, I'm always such a big fan of these bikes, um, especially with the track conditions today here. Uh, it was very unpredictable. It was, you had like a soft top layer, but then hard underneath. And the cool thing about these 350s is it makes them so rider friendly, you know? So it's like just in between, obviously, the 250 and 450, but it just makes it to where you can just manage the power and it, and you can control it coming around all the soft stuff and get a lot of traction everywhere. So, um, and also I feel whenever I ride a 350, I don't get so tired mm. as when I'm on a 450. 450 is a lot to hang on to. And, and for a lot of people, a 250 seems like not enough. Uh, so as Jay alluded to, he calls it the Goldilocks bike. I mean, it's it's a it's a goofy name, but it's kind of accurate. He's kind of nailed it. The porridge is just right here. Um, let's talk about suspension. Race Tech went through this. It's a spring conversion kit, which personally I always like. What did you think of the suspension? Yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've just never been a fan of Air Fork. Um, so having the springs in there, um, yeah, it, it felt really good. Yeah. And so, and, you know, there was a downhill section today that got pretty – pretty rough and um, yeah everything felt really balanced and handled pretty well so uh, this thing has really no engine mods done just an FMF exhaust and Jamie mapped this thing so uh, tell me about what you thought of the engine the power just the overall character of it yeah so um, very happy with the power uh, I tried the two different maps um, the more aggressive one is the one that I like I, I like the most uh, it actually gave me more engine braking and so I felt that it, it felt it felt better having that uh, to where the mellow one, it kind of just rolled on. Uh, it, and I just, I'm not a fan. I mean, just, I don't know. I feel like I was able to control the bike a lot better coming in the corners, having that more engine braking. Yeah. And that's what the aggressive mapping did for it. Uh, it engine brake is interesting too, because some people like more, some people like less or none. Um, but there is benefit to it uh, in that it's, it is the most consistent braking mechanism you have on the bike your foot on that pedal is very inconsistent you know mm -hmm. trying to get it exactly right or releasing it smoothly enough where that engine brake's gonna be the same every single time so yeah it is good to have some it helps set that front wheel as you're coming into a corner to give you some traction on the front but too much can be you know not good either right it starts to kind of throw your weight forward and so you got to find that sweet spot and i think for everybody, that sweet spot's different. It, it moves a little. Absolutely, and I think that's just, like you said, a, that's just more of like a rider preference, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, for me, I like the more aggressive setting. And um, yeah, I was very impressed on how much I can rev this thing. Mm. That was one thing I noticed. Um, it just, it wanted, the power just kept just kept climbing on me. Yeah, these, so. these bikes definitely like to run at higher RPMs. Uh, how about tires? We have an aggressive, you know, the, the, the scoop tire on this thing. and. Typically at Kawea, that would be a great tire. We've had a bunch of rain though, and I, I feel like he kind of capped the track. It was very hard underneath, uh, just to try to get the rain to run off, but it didn't look like, it looked like this tire was, I'd see you out of some of the harder turns and it's wiggling around a bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, if I could have picked for today, I would have ran with the MX-34, although there was some uphills that were pretty soft that this thing hooked really well on. Um, but like you said, in the corners, uh, it, it yeah, it felt very slippery. Yeah, yeah, it, so. was, it was a hard base out there today. Uh, what about grips? We got the ODI, bars and grips, uh, titanium pegs, like good platform seat. Everything else feel good? Yeah, everything felt good. I mean, you can't go wrong with the ODI lock-on grips. Uh, the foot pegs, uh, these were a little bigger than OEM ones, so that's that's always nice to, you know, feel more comfortable on your toes. Um, so I do want to uh, mention with how the track conditions were today, being a little bit more slick, um, this bike in – I know it's got to do a lot, a lot with the chassis, with the you know it being the steel frame. It just for me, it didn't feel so um, um, so rigid. It, I could feel that flex. Kind of gives a little bit. Yeah, and that um, man, it really benefited for how the track was today. That could have been the Works chassis lab engine hangers too. They do give it a little more of a soft character. Kind of, I always notice it um, in braking bumps, chatter, kind of coming into turns. It allows it to to kind of fall in easier, especially if there's bumps. Um, I don't know what, where you were feeling it, but those do have a good effect on it. So yeah, uh, it's a fun bike and yep. Jay did a great job making it look cool. Big thank you to all the, the partners that, that came on board, FMF, uh, Decal Works, Dunlop, ODI, really cool stuff. Pro X, great products across the board. We appreciate all of them supporting him so that we can come out and ride his bikes. 
Uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you to Jay Clark uh, over at Dirt Bike TV. And uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. If you like this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future videos, comment what you thought, and share it with your friends.